Hello everybody, I'm Steve and welcome to Green Side Up. Now today I'm getting my potatoes in pots in and in the, on top of these two new no dig raised beds. And I'm just setting the pots out now and all I'm doing is sort of scurrying them in because I want these holes at the bottom covered with the compost so that when the plants grow on the roots can come out into the soil. But we'll talk more about that a bit later. Well, there we go, I'll crack on and get this done. Now, I've grown in containers for, oh, maybe 12 years or more in total in various methods, even right the way back to when I first, first started growing potatoes in our garden before I got this allotment. And I was using various different types of grow sack and every year I buy a couple more and it was spreading and spreading. Then I got this allotment. Then I used some sacks down here. I grew in the ground and I grew whatever containers I could get my hands on. And then Allotment Diaries, Dan from Allotment Diaries, posted this method of, post, of um, potting them up in 30 litre tubs. And then the internet was away with this, this idea of the 30 litre pots growing in compost. And it's, it's cracking it. It gives you a really good crop. It's easy to manage, no earthing up, no digging the soil over. You just empty them out into a wheelbarrow and there's your harvest. I mean, it really couldn't be that easier. Um, but anyway, um, I've said for about the last five or six years that I'm, I'm not growing in the ground next year. Not growing in the ground next year. And every year I end up planting a couple of rows. This year I'm not. I've bought a whole load of new tubs. Um, these are my old ones. Um, and what I did with these, uh, you can see I've, I've drilled some bigger holes in the bottom. And they've got the holes at the side which are big enough already. And that is... I put them in the soil and bury those holes at the sides and what you've got then is when you've got your potatoes growing away in there the roots can get out and get into the soil underneath and I found that um, to be beneficial for a couple of reasons it gets more feed from the soil underneath and it also allows it to connect to the um, to the soil underneath and get water moisture which can be a, a problem in pots there is another little hack for helping with the water, which I'll show you later. But, I say, they're the first pots I got, and I got, I think I had about 16 of them, and then I had a collection, probably twice in volume to that, of other pots, which I'm no longer using for potato ground, because I've got these. Because um, I've done a number of tests with the amount of potatoes in, in a tub, and the amount of potatoes in a bigger tub, with various amounts, and it hasn't really increased the yield. But if you're using a 100 litre tub, you're obviously you're using three times the compost in here than in one of these in the 30 litre. So it starts to get a bit pricey and a bit out of range. But these are the second tubs I've got. Again, they've got the holes around the sides and there's a few holes in the bottom. I'll see if we can show you these. The holes are actually inset into there so the roots can get straight out of there. And they're a good enough size already, I think, for the roots to get out. So I'm not drilling them, I'm leaving them as is. And again, they just go in and the soil gets earthed up around those holes at the bottom. Now, um, I've found you do get one or two roots going out of the bottom, but mostly they're going out of the side. What I find happens is that the roots will come out from the potato tube, hit the side of the pot, and then they start spiraling round like we know all roots do in a pot. As soon as they find that hole, they escape and they're into the soil. So I find that they're the most productive, those side holes. 
So that's where we're up to with them. Um, now I'm going to get them all full up with a um, third full of compost. And for this first bit, I've got some green waste compost and I'm going to go half and half with green waste compost and bagged compost. Right, I've got all these tubs now and the 64 of them, I've got all of them filled up about halfway. Uh, that's one spade of the green waste compost and one space of the bagged compost. And next I'm going to put in some feed for the potatoes. Now, on the subject of the seed potatoes, that there is solid starch. And it started to chit. Uh, that's a different story with chitting. But uh, it's full of food. And as that photosynthesizes, it will reduce that starch. It's got a lot of feed in there already. Now, I'm only going to be putting two tubers in each bucket. So there's two plants, basically. So I don't need to put a great deal of food in with this compost. I say compost, the way I reckon it, it works for about six weeks. And let's say first earlies are done in 12 weeks. Second early, 16 to 18 weeks. Main crops anywhere after that, 20 weeks. Uh, so they don't need a great deal of food. As I say, it's just for two, two plants. So I've got a big bucket of blood fish and bone. Now this is a balanced fertilizer uh, and it's, it's MPK numbers or six, six, six. That tells you it's balanced. If you've got a feed that is 12, 12, 12, just means there's twice as much of that feed in there. I'm back at home now, um, but I thought I'd better do a little piece about MPK, because uh, I meant to do that down the allotments, but I got so tied up with what I was doing, I completely forgot to do it. So MPK. The first one is N and that stands for nitrogen and that is all of the green growth on your plants. So when your plant starts to emerge from, from the soil, that stem is all sort of sappy and flexible and the leaves, all of that is the nitrogen growth. That's what gets your plant going. The second part of the MPK is the P and that stands for the phosphorus and that deals and promotes good root development. You need good root development to take up the nutrients to feed your plant to get it going. And the last one is K and that's of the MPK and that stands for the potassium. I think the K has got something to do with the chemical element symbols. I'm not entirely sure but anyway K stands for potassium and that promotes um, good um, fruit and shoot growth and um, it's also good for the overall health of the plant. Uh, so that's things like your tomorite and your comfrey feed. Um, so hopefully that will give you a better idea. There are three main macronutrients that your plant needs to get going. I think there's about sort of 17 micronutrients that they also need. Things like manganese and iron. It's, it's an endless thing when you start to look into it. But for the moment, just concern yourselves with the MPK. N is nitrogen, P is phosphorus, and the K is potassium. So I hope that helps. <laughs> so I now have the buckets half full. One spade of green waste compost, one spade of bought bagged compost, handful of blood fish and bone. And I've also put in some, um, some granite sort of shingle stuff. There's a bit of drainage in because I had a couple of bags left over. Put that in, so two seed tubers, and I'm just going to literally bury them about halfway down into that compost. And then I'm going to soak them. Right, now that's soaked, I shall fill this pot up and soak it again. Now this is how I've always done it like this but last year I seen um, on Tony Smith's channel and he used a mulch, um, a barley, uh, no it was a rapeseed straw mulch and I'm going to try that this year so I'll come back in a minute when that's, uh, cause it's still soup on the top. I'll come back in a minute and we'll put that on. 
Okay, so this is that barley straw mulch. It's actually impregnated with citronella as well. So it smells nice. I'd say this is new to me. I've never done this before. But it seemed to work well for Tony. And Tony actually got this from another Tony. <laughs> it's all the Tonys, isn't it? Tony O'Neill from Simplified Gardening. So I went and had a look at his as well. Just, you know, you just want to see all of it. So I'll put both the links for the videos in the description. So I reckon that's it. We'll cover that over and then just to finish it off put my rose on the watering can this time just wet that down as well and I believe this should sort of mat together so I'm really soaking this at this stage I just want the whole pot absolutely drenched so that it's all all the compost and all the straw is completely soaked don't want no dry patches in there and that's essentially that for them so I've run out of time today uh, gonna have to go up home that's why I just wanted to finish that one off and then I can finish this video off and tomorrow I'll come back and whack these potatoes in it's not much work now most of the groundwork has been done so anyway that's it potatoes in pots thanks to the two townies for that little hint on the mulch there um, and we'll see how that goes through the season it seems to work for those two guys so I don't see why it shouldn't work for me and that's the thing I love about YouTube and the internet in general is that people try these things and come up with new new variations on something that's old and we all learn something from it and uh, pass it on and say you know this is this is the guy that told me how to do it go and have a look at him he's doing great things and you know I, I love that buzz and I, and I love that sort of change around and um, thanks to the two Tonys for that I do appreciate that um, so yeah that's it really and I'll get these potatoes finished off tomorrow I can whiz through these and get them finished off but that's it for today look after yourselves everyone please stay safe I'll see you very, very soon. Ta-ra now.